Hey there, it's Jim and Debbie with the long-awaited, much-anticipated episode 61 of the Midday Minute. Hey Jim, it's been right. a while. It has and people, or at least person, uh, are clamoring for this episode. This is for you, Rita Smith. That's right. That's right. So, you know, let's uh, uh, be in, in all seriousness. We've obviously um, cut back on our schedule, on our production schedule for the Midday Minute, partly because we have three other shows now on the on the channel, partly because we had a lot of new content from con uh, that we debuted or premiered at convention. We also have some content coming down the pike. We had a um, film crew attend the third of the three mini scholar uh, service trips to Boston. Mm -hmm. So there's more content on the channel. Uh, less of a reason for us to be uh, chirping at you every week or every other week. Right. We're going to try to get back to a regular monthly schedule. Um, so far, you know, August kind of got away from us because vacations and just, you know, summer business. Uh, but we're going to try to settle into um, a routine once, once a month, probably I mean, on the first or second Wednesday. We'll try to figure that out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Now, on today's episode, um, we are going to be talking about Fidelity Club. Last month was Fidelity Month, our first ever Fidelity Month, mm -hmm. Fidelity Club Month. And we're going to have Ashley Hart, who is the architect of, of that promotion, and she uh, heads up the Fidelity Club program for us. She's going to come on. We're going to talk a little bit about the Fidelity Club. After we say goodbye to Ashley, we're going to talk about some other exciting things that have been going on, uh, including a trip uh, to Ohio for me, um, uh, some exciting things happened on the uh, last of the three mini scholar service trips to Boston. Uh, and we had a special visitor at headquarters also. Yeah, all right. All right, so without further ado, let's bring in. <sighs> without further ado, the let's bring minute. in Ashley Hart. Here we go. Just a little bit rusty on the Zoom. Ashley should be coming in right now. Here she is coming at us from our war room at headquarters. You're in the office today, Ashley, right? Yes, I am in the office today in the famous war room. That's right. That's where we plan our wars and plan and manage our wars right there. <laughs> um, I guess we should acknowledge that. The, uh, the building, uh, we are all in at least two days a week and we are working uh, from home those other days. And next week we move to uh, at least three days a week uh, schedule. Um, so, you know, things are cautiously and slowly getting back to normal. So yeah. we were just talking about Fidelity. Is it Fidelity Month or Fidelity Club Month? We can call it Fidelity Club Month. Use the, okay. the full term. Yeah, it's almost over. I go in like five weeks between episodes. I'm really rusty, really. <laughs> right now. Uh, and if this was your brainchild, right? Oh, my brainchild, yes. I am the, the caretaker of Fidelity Club. And right. um, we came up with this idea for Fidelity Club Month to celebrate and get the word out. So why don't we give uh, just real quick, uh, what is uh, what are what is the Fidelity Club and, and why is it important? Absolutely. Yeah, the Fidelity Club is our monthly giving program. It's our sustaining giving program. So uh, our members of the Fidelity Club are sustaining um, our fundraising and our programs by giving as little as five dollars a month um, through their credit card or checking account. It's kind of like you just start it and you set it and it keeps um, on running. So the sustaining gifts are super important. I know we really saw that this past fiscal year um, with COVID starting is that the Fidelity Club members really were able to keep our fundraising up through really challenging times for lodges and for everyone in the country. And we were still able to, you know, even increase the, the money that we were able to um, offer to lodges for them to share with their communities. So sustaining gifts are super important um, for us and for, um, you know, the Elks. So. And the people yeah. who came to support. You know, our then board chair, uh, Jim Grillo, spoke so eloquently about this at uh, the convention when he um, he shared why he decided to, to join the Fidelity Club. And, and it really was what you just said. It was those first couple of months of the pandemic last year when everything was shut down and uh, donations had really dried up um, and the endowment fund had taken a hit. And it's like, you know, we had just put this this beautiful plan together in February and now it's you know, March and April, and we're like, are we going to be able to do all this stuff? Like, you know, right. what's going to happen here? But we had the steady, reliable source of, of revenue uh, that just, you know, that steeled us to what was ahead and, and really was able to fuel what we were doing in those first few months before we kind of found our footing. So 
you know, after the way the Fidelity Club really shone, uh, we decided it needed its own month, right? <laughs> it wasn't enough to roll it into ENF month in October. We needed, uh, you know, Fidelity deserved its own month. Yeah, Fidelity Club is definitely very special and deserves uh, the attention that we are giving it. And also I feel like with ENF month, like the things move the quickest through the grapevine with the Elks, right? Like the more we talk about stuff, the more other people at lodges are spreading that information through their lodge and district. So Fidelity Club Month really gave us that opportunity to be like, hey, in case you don't know, or if you have questions, because we do get a lot of questions about um, Fidelity Club. For instance, the biggest question we get is, does my lodge get credit for this donation? You know, I've been giving through my fundraising chair or through my secretary or my dues for so long. And I wanna make sure that you know, my lodge gets credit for that. So the Fidelity Club is designed that way so that we're able to recognize the individual that's giving so generously every month and we're able to credit the per member giving um, total for the lodge. So it really is a great way, especially, you know, we still are in a pandemic, everyone, you know? So I feel like fundraising is still a challenge right now. Um, not everybody is able to, depending on their state, able to meet in person at their lodge anymore. So Fidelity Club has really, created that ability to connect with your uh, fellow members and still be able to give to the ENF. The Fidelity Club's been around now for what, a dozen years? Jim, did, we, did it debut Wait, in- Ashley, guess who named the Fidelity Club? Guess who came up with the name? I feel like it was okay, someone every, in this room. Everybody who named it raised their hand. Debbie came up with well, it. Well, it was not me that named it, but I was in the meeting when we did talk when we discussed the importance of it. Um, yeah. And I was it in two thousand and eight or two thousand and nine? Thereabouts, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's been around for a while, and it is obviously certainly deserving of its own month. And it's exciting that August was that month. Um, I remember I've been around long enough to remember when there were only a few hundred members of the Fidelity Club. Um, where are we at now? Well, it's so funny you say that because while we're recording this Fidelity Club month is not over, we already have 218 signups just for this month. We've had a record breaking month for the Fidelity Club. So the fact that we're getting that many hundred like every month, like this program has really taken off. And I think we're going to be very close to 4,000 by the end of the month. Wow. So, um, our goal is 5% of our donors. That's sort of an industry standard. So we've uh, embraced that and we're, and we're trying to get there, which is, for us would be around, I don't know, 55, 5,600 or so. Um, and we found that uh, the best way to reach our goals is to share that goal with our fundraising chairs, right? Who are doing the lion's share of the work. So check this out. We ended uh, the 2018 fiscal year at 1,983 members. Um, 2019, uh, 2,272. And at that point we started to get a little bit more vocal about what we were trying to do and, and enlisting the aid of our volunteers. And so really in three years, we've, we've doubled the size of this program. If that growth rate continues, I mean, that's gonna be incredible. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I started three and a half years ago. So it's oh, been really is there a correlation? fun. Huh, correlation? Started towards the end of the, fiscal year 18. So um, I think just by having, you know, the support to kind of talk about this program and kind of give it the attention it needs on our internal side, we've been able to kind of flip that around um, and get everyone else excited about it too. So yeah, definitely not new, but it's, it's new in the way that we're encouraging this program. And yeah, relying on it and, and featuring it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really encouraging our chairs uh, to start their ask at the Fidelity Club and work down from there. Um, and it, seem, it seems to be working. Now, uh, Ashley, you mentioned uh, the misperception that if you don't donate through your lodge, uh, the lodge won't receive credit. Not true, of course. Uh, and you know, I encourage you to give the way you are most comfortable giving, but I will say that the only thing that you can be certain of if you insist on giving through the lodge is that your donation will take longer to get here and go to work for our program recipients. Do it if that's what you're comfortable with, but understand that that's the only thing that you're guaranteeing is that it'll take longer to get to us. Yeah, and we have so many other great recognition programs too that are kind of relying on those quick submissions, getting the donations in by the fiscal year or even you know that month. So yeah, the recognition for Fidelity Club is great too. It's something that you'll always receive. The, the longer that you're in Fidelity Club, you're able to reach various levels of recurring gifts. So yeah, as 
as the caretaker of the Fidelity Club, I will always advocate that, um, even though I do know that some people really do just like sending in a check and that's okay too. And you know, and, from a fundraising standpoint, one of the reasons we love the Fidelity Club is because those people tend to stay as donors. Like what's the renewal rate for a Fidelity Club member versus uh, the average donor? Right, yeah. The So Fidelity Club members renew at a much higher rate. It's about like 93% where um, donors that are not in the Fidelity Club, so maybe you're giving through your lodge or your dues or just directly to us, um, is only about 53%. So we are able to kind of see the or rather have like a relationship with the donors that are able to renew through the Fidelity Club because it's just, you know, every month and every year. So like five out of 10 versus nine out of 10, that's a no brainer, right? Definitely. You mentioned how the, the Fidelity Club members obviously sustained us through the pandemic, right? But the, you know, and we talk a lot about just how the ease of which it is once you sign up, you really don't have to think about it anymore. But if you do think about it, you should think about it in terms of like, you're helping us get through this, you know, this really difficult time. And mm -hmm. that's got to feel really good too, to help support our programs. Um, Jim, and not, not us, but the people we're helping, the people who are counting. Okay, of course, the, the lodges. Now, do you find that Fidelity Club members uh, tend to designate their gifts to a certain program or is it just a general supportive programs or to the endowment fund? How does that usually um, play yeah. out? Yeah, so we, it, it kind of varies. We have the option of designating gifts. There are some people that just love all of our programs. And so they will choose to support all of our programs. And that allows us to kind of be flexible with what we need. Like for instance, with the pandemic, when you know we really needed that money to go towards uh, the community investments program. We also have donors that have really strong relationships, maybe through the hoop shoot um, and that they wanna support that. Um, and then, of course, we have a lot of people that um, designate to the other programs as well as our endowment fund um, that has been around as like our longest standing designation. So yeah, it's definitely allows you to support whatever you're interested in um, and whatever um, you know you're connected with. Um, you know. And so when you sign up, you get to, you get to choose, right? Yeah, and I think it's important to mention too that there's so many ways to sign up for the Fidelity Club. You know, not everybody that is a donor at the ENF is really on the computer a lot or comfortable signing up on the computer. So um, no matter how you sign up, we're always offering a way to designate your gift. Um, so you can call, you can uh, go through your fundraising chair. They have a lot of materials at the lodge as well and also do it online as well. Uh, and we find also that Fidelity Club donors tend to give more also because, you know, giving um, small amounts each month uh, adds up over the course of the year. So it's, uh, what is it? I think it's about like $220 compared to like an annual giver at about 50. Yeah. So, so, you know, a lot of reasons to love uh, the Fidelity Club, whether you are uh, the fundraiser, a fundraiser or a donor or a program recipient, right? Absolutely. So anyway, we felt like Fidelity uh, Club needed to shine. We gave it its own month. Um, you know, what, what, what did we do? How did we celebrate? Uh, and, and what happened? Sure. Yeah. So what we decided to do was like a communications takeover. Shout out to our lovely communications team that... Um, was able to help us spread the word through both um, our annual, or sorry, our monthly newsletter, um, our ENF fundraising chair newsletter and Frontline. And we also did some social media stuff. We did Fidelity Fridays and we shared different aspects of the Fidelity Club and how it's beneficial to you, to your lodge, and also to the ENF. Um, it, was and we really, also it was really fun to see how uh, some of the lodges and some of um, Elks out there embrace the, the hashtag Fidelity Friday, mm -hmm. right? And start seeing them use that in their, in their posts. That was fun to see. Yeah, we got some great responses too. And um, like I mentioned before, we got a really great turnout. I still have another week of gifts to process after today. So hopefully we'll have some final numbers to see how our, our first year, or sorry, first month of um, Fidelity Club went. Um, to kind of inform how, you know, maybe how we'll handle it next year. So get ready for August, 2022. <laughs> exciting. exciting stuff. Um, any, and yeah, finally, I mean, you already shared some of the results of the month, but any, um, any, any stories stand out or, um, you know, any, anything else you'd like to plug about the Fidelity Club? 
Um, well, I just really want to shout out our fundraising chairs who have really like grabbed onto this program and seen how it's helped them um, connect with the members in their lodge. And we are seeing so many brand new elk members that have never given to the ENF have their first gift to be the Fidelity Club. And so we've talked about how that's kind of the important step that we want our volunteers to be taking and they totally are. Um, and also we have like a very large amount of fundraising chairs that are also in the Fidelity Club. So special shout out to all of our volunteers that are really just um, keeping this program moving forward um, on our behalf. That's great. Debbie, you got anything else for Ashley? No, I'm just excited to, to hear the success of the first Fidelity Club month. And I look forward to actually knowing exactly in, uh, when we get through this week um, where we ended up. So congratulations to you and to the whole donor services team for making this not only a priority, but uh, the success that it is. And I look forward to us reaching that, that 5% that we set, you know, we set that goal a while ago. And like you said, our fundraising chairs are doing all the heavy lifting to make it happen. So I'm glad we'll be there by the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. You know. Fingers so, crossed. Yeah. All right, Ashley, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you at the office soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, thanks, guys. Ashley. Bye. Bye, bye. So, Debbie, um, yeah, that's Fidelity uh, Club Month. That was fun. Absolutely. It's a great program. It's a great club to, to belong to. And well, we are, we are both members. Right. We're members, right. It's certainly to, to see the number, to hear those numbers and to know uh, what it's doing for us as a foundation and what it's allowing our lodges to do um, with our programs is we should all feel really good about that. I mean, it is quite simply, without hyperbole, the best way to support the Elks National Foundation. Right. So, uh, and there's lots of reasons to support the Elks National Foundation. Um, and let's just talk about some of the things that happened real quick. Um, the, the, you know, at, we, last time we recorded, we were at the um, mini scholar service trip to Chicago. Since then, there's been one in Santa Monica. And then was it just last week there in Boston, right? And there was right, some right, the week of uh, the 19th through the 21st, it was in Boston. And why don't you tell everybody what happened there at the tail end? <laughs> well, um, everybody, first of all, our hearts and prayers and thoughts go out to all the people in, in Louisiana and Mississippi experiencing Ida. But uh, what happened in Boston, of course, was that uh, Henry was coming through. So um, if you will recall from the uh, forced ping pong uh, playing episode, uh, episode 60, um, we had talked about the mini trips, right? And the whole concept was that we wanted uh, the scholars to be able to drive into the location. So that's how we picked kind of Chicago and Los Angeles, Santa Monica and Boston. We have a lot of scholars in and around the area. Well, Boston's so, not a big college town though, is it? It's not. Like yeah. we really had to like import a lot of scholars to get yeah. there, but you know, we, we made it happen. Yeah. Um, so for that trip, there were 12 scholars um, and I think eight of them actually drove in or were attending Harvard, so they just had to, you know, go down the road. Um, but I got a call that late on Friday night, the 20th, and it was our uh, program, our scholarship manager, Colleen Conrad, saying, Debbie, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but there's this hurricane that's about to, <laughs> to hit Boston. And I was like, actually, I hadn't been watching the news, <laughs> so let's talk through. So um, the good news was service, uh, the scholars served all day Friday, all day Saturday, um, and then after that, they were able to, to leave, to go home. Um, and then the handful of scholars that flew, including our scholarship manager, Colleen Conrad, were able to get out um, on Sunday, which was great with, you know, maybe just a bit of a delay. The only person that was uh, affected uh, the most in terms of canceled arrangements was our own Elk Scholar Fellow, Grace Roebuck, whose train to um, Rhode Island was canceled. So she had to leave to go back to um, Providence on Monday. Mm -hmm. But all's well that ends well. Um, everybody was safe. They all had a fantastic time. Um, and as you mentioned uh, at the, the beginning of the show, um, we sent a film crew to, to you know interview them and we will be uh, premiering that in the, the coming you know, months. So I'm excited about that. Our good friend Al from Springfield, Mass, um, headed over to Boston uh, to We're doing all our hoop shoot stuff for the past. Right. Yeah. All the videos. Yeah, um, so. 
he knows us well, but he doesn't know the scholarship program all that well. So it's great to have him uh, have a friendly face to do that. So he was there and we'll, like I said, we'll get that debut uh, in yes. the coming weeks. Speaking of friendly faces, we had a visitor at headquarters a couple weeks ago, uh, Jay Little, top scholarship recipient from 2016. Uh, Jay was, Little Cunningham came in. Yep, he was in town visiting a friend, uh, uh, attending a friend's graduation party. And the two of them came by to uh, take a look at the memorial. And then Grace and I took him out to lunch at one of our favorite haunts, uh, Francis's on uh, Clark Street. How wonderful. Uh, really, it's always great catching up with uh, with Jay and really with any of our scholars. Um, yes. it, was, it was nice to see him and, uh, you know, he is uh, on his way to taking over the world. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is, of course, not lost on us, the relationship that we've built with our scholars. And, you know, I think it should be noted that Jay reached out to us, you know, the, the, I think the day before to say, hey, Hey, Elks family, I'm going to be in Chicago. I can't imagine being in Chicago, being so close to you guys and not seeing you. Right. So, you know, he, I think it was a last minute trip for him, but that you and Grace were able to take him out where, yeah. you know, Kate and I and, and Colleen were all working remotely and weren't able to get into the office that day, but that it meant enough to him to say, Hey, I'm going to be there, you know, and he was only in for what, 24, 48 hours. Like yeah. it was a real quick trip. So and without fail, every time he walks into uh, the memorial, he says, this is like home. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, and then, uh, so uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, um, same weekend as the Boston service trip, uh, I went uh, to Ohio. Uh, for a very special presentation. Debbie, do you know what a five-tool player is in baseball? No. A uh, five-tool player is someone who hits for average. They hit for power. Uh, they run fast. They have a strong and accurate throwing arm. Uh, and they have a good glove, very good fielder. Now, Sounds like the type of player you want on your team. Absolutely. Everybody wants a five-tool player. Um, so for the foundation, you know, we have what I would say, you know, the equivalent for us would be a four-tool player. Um, and those tools are, you know, a generous spirit. Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, giving to us is important to you. It's something you do consistently and reliably, um, regardless of the amount. Uh, giving your time also, and, and that's uh, the second and third tool. One would be as a fundraising chair, uh, because, you know, when people give to the foundation, most of them, they're not responding to one of uh, my beautifully, eloquently written uh, fundraising appeals are given to someone who comes up to them at the lodge and says, hey, I noticed you haven't given this uh, this year. You want to take care of that right now. Um, very important to us, our fundraising chairs, as we just talked about in the previous segment with Ashley. Um, but also uh, people who volunteer on the programs we fund. Because, um, hey, let's face it, that's, that's what it's all about. It's about building stronger communities through these programs that we fund. And those programs are all made possible because of volunteers, right? Whether it's uh, somebody promoting the scholarship contest or judging an application or rebounding at a hoop shoot or, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, a lead on a project. Yeah. To, you know, a project serving a uh, meeting a need in the community or uh, hand, uh, providing healthy alternatives to drug use or, you know, or information about the dangers of drug use, whatever it is. Right. Uh, so going to the veterans hospitals, um, you know, giving your time in that way is so important too. That's the third tool. And, and, and the fourth tool uh, is more rare, and that is uh, someone who has a pulpit, and they use that pulpit to preach about the Elks National Foundation. And so I went to Columbus, Ohio, uh, to recognize the first ever uh, champion of the Elks National Foundation. In our 98 year, 93-year history, was it 93-year history? We had never awarded, uh, presented an award like this before. Um, and I went uh, to, uh, to do that. Uh, when I say a champion of the ENF, I'm not talking about in a sports sense, although I set this up by talking about baseball, I'm talking about in the classical sense, like a champion. If I had to pick one person to go out and fight a battle for us, I would pick would be. Mary Carolyn Nicholson, the former first lady uh, who has been an, an ENF fundraising chair at uh, the, the, the lodge district and state levels. Uh, she's been a long time a grants project coordinator. Um, she's a bronze level donor who has uh, donated uh, for, I think, 21 consecutive uh, years. Um, 
and she uh, is just constantly preaching about the Ina. So that's why it was a quick in and out trip for me. Um, I was invited by Kermit Morse, our longtime friend uh, from Ohio, uh, to do this and jumped at the opportunity. And that was a lot of fun. Plus, fantastic band they had at the, at the you no, know, you've been to Ohio before, so you know, you know the crew. Um, they, their Friday night, they call it a fun night. And it was fun. It was a really nice buffet. And then they had this band from, I think out of Union City, Indiana. I can't remember the name of the band, but it was three guys with guitars. And they were fantastic. I think they played every Beatles song. Oh, I did. Like I, you know, I was dancing in my head or in my like chair dancing until they played, um, uh, is it uh, Wagon Wheel oh. by Darius Rucker. And then boom, I popped up and then I was dancing by my table and people saw me, kept telling me to come out to the dance floor. I went out there and then didn't leave the dance floor for the rest of the night. So. <laughs> no wonder you're such a hot ticket. Going to support <laughs> I, the... <laughs> our, our champions out there in the field and then you provide entertainment as well when i when i uh presented the award to uh mary carolyn the next day which totally surprised her by the way that which was the most the funnest part yeah. i joked that had it not been for the band and all that dancing i probably could have come up with a fifth tool for it. <laughs> but uh, i spent more time oh. dancing and less time thinking about it but anyway yeah. that's what we've been up to um you got a site visit coming up on the horizon, but we could probably talk more about that uh, in an episode or two, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Well, uh, Kate and I are heading to Atlanta in mid-October for a site mm -hmm. visit, getting ready for uh, convention 2022. So yeah, we'll talk about that in October. But uh, as we record today on the last day of Fidelity Club Month, also known as August 31st, 2021, um, Today is the last day for lodges who are interested in an impact grant to submit an impact intent, which is really just kind of, it's an elevator pitch of what the project is going to be. We then review them and invite select lodges to uh, submit a full application. Um, so that deadline is today. And then tomorrow when our program uh, episode 61 airs uh, is September 1st and the 2022 Legacy Awards contest starts tomorrow and runs through February 7th. So if you are an elk, which I am sure you are, if you are watching the Midday Minute, um, and if you have a grandchild or a child that is a high school senior who's going to be heading off to college next year, please encourage them to apply or spread the word throughout your um, lodge because uh, you might not know somebody, but I'm sure you have lodge members who do. Yeah, um, and kind of lost in all the excitement of everything that's been going on the past few years um, is that we increased the number of available legacy scholarships by a hundred, right? Like over the over a three year period or so. Yeah, two fifty yep. to three hundred fifty. Two fifty to three hundred. We were at three hundred for a couple years, and then last year it was three hundred and fifty. Right. And this year it's three hundred and fifty again. So, and, and a hundred of those are what we call at large. Yeah, so say, those, you know, those the the hundred that we added were all at large, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, which means uh, they don't that the, the they don't that regardless of which state you're competing in, you can also compete for those at large. Right. Awards, so the big deal. The big yeah. deal. And we are happy to welcome them into the Elks family, um, along with our MBS scholars in April, 2022, so. Oh, it, one more thing we should probably talk about uh, uh, quickly, briefly, is uh, two weeks ago, we had a couple of site visits uh, in Chicago for the um, next year's Hoop Shoot Finals, 50th anniversary finals. We went to the hotel for the event. Uh, mm -hmm. Beautiful, historic Chicago Hilton on Michigan Avenue, great location. A lot of space. Uh, we encourage you to come because there will be room. Yeah. Um, and then we went to the uh, the venue for the contest itself, Wintrust Arena, which is oh my goodness. Did you like it? I loved it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. And somewhere there's a there's a photo circulating of me buffing the floors while I was yeah. there. You really so. you took the opportunity to take that mop and yeah. shine that floor. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a lot of fun and. Um, you know, I, I had, of course, been part of the 2020 planning when we selected those venues. Um, right. The Chicago Hilton is, like as you said, it's beautiful. It's historic. It's one of the largest hotels in the city. Yep. So that's also great. Um, and so the Wintrust Arena seats 10,000. So uh, we need uh, 
fans in the stands. Yeah. So if you're well, thinking and, you know, you like the program, please make plans. Right. And the Holiday Inn was was great uh, while we were there. Um, but every single year, we were there for four years. Every single year, we had to turn people away from the awards banquet because yeah. we had exactly 530 seats, and that was wedged in like you couldn't. Right. You couldn't really reach for the fork because you're just wedged in so tightly, right? Uh, yeah, we. It was. It was a, a absolutely fine, and you know, suitable. Um, yeah, it worked. That, that was. It, it totally worked. The views were incredible, right, from right. the 14th and 15th floors. But we certainly outgrew. We are going to be. We're going to have. We can have a lot of people in that awards banquet room uh in at the hilton and still be adequately distanced right <laughs> i mean right and i'm no, so it's, glad it's that you brought your room so. right. i'm so glad you brought it up because you know we're going to be talking about it early and often so yeah. we are going to do everything we can to get people to join us in chicago not because we have the, we have the capacity and that's great we want people to be there for that reason, but because it's the 50th anniversary the of, the, of pro the program, it's a celebration. Yeah. And it's also, you know, we're bouncing back as we've talked about after, yep. uh, you know, the finals were canceled and a kind of a, a very truncated 2021 season, we're back. And right. even though the pandemic is still around and we were hoping to have it be firmly in our rear view mirror, it is not, um, but we are confident that we will be going forward and that we yeah. will be having. Right. The, the road forward is isn't as smooth as we were hoped it would be, but there is a road forward and we believe we can safely have the tournament this year. Correct. Right. Yeah. And we're okay. excited about yeah. it. So, yeah. So much to catch up on. After yeah. 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 So. All right. Well, I think that does it, right? For episode 61. Yeah. Hopefully it's worth the wait, everybody. Right? Yeah. We'll, we'll uh, be back. And yeah, we'll be, we'll be back in a few weeks. And, and again, we'll try to get back to a regular uh, schedule. Uh, we miss you guys. We miss you. Right? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, and until next time, uh, stay safe. Right? Bye. Right. Bye, guys.